And I guess now we're gonna look at the end of the section and see how this whole thing is being done. So as usual, I open the skill building exercises. I hope we didn't do that section as of yet. Please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I hope we did not look at section. I think the weekend's been way too long, right? So that's why I want to make sure that I don't do it again, because sometimes it happens. So if we already did this section, just let me know. So it turns out that when you have the equation of the line, you can always try to find the slope and intercept of the line. So if I'm looking at, for example, problem 11 here, that says, find the slope of the line and the intercept of the line. So what are they talking about? Well, the intersection with y-axis in exercise 11, I can find right away, it's a zero point. So I can say that y-axis intercept B is zero simply because I can see on the picture that my line is crossing y-axis at point zero or point zero zero. Now, how do I interpret slope? Well, it turns out that we interpret it as a quotient of rise or run. What does that mean? Well, the run is coming from the change in x coordinates. So if it goes from zero to two, then the run here should be two. And the rise comes from the change in y coordinates. So if this point is one, in other words, the length is one from x-axis to the point here, then it's equal to one. So the idea of this is that two points determine lines. So if I have two points that are not the same, then we can always connect those points and produce the line. And then the slope, which is called M, is also defined as a quotient of rise divided by run. Rise over run. That's the idea. So I can divide these guys that I just saw on my picture. The rise was two, the run was one. And it looks like the slope is two. I say, can you, Alex, write the equation of your line now? Because you found a slope, which is two. So multiply it by x. And then you add your y-axis intercept, which is zero. I say, why did you add zero? You just leave it as a 2x, and that'd be the answer. Yes, that's it. And that's actually why we needed the slope and intercept to move on one step further to reduce equation of line. And uh, actually, there is a formula that will be used in this chapter that deal, deals with equation of line. So whenever you have a point, and we call it as a pair x, y, and they like to call it x, one, y, one. And also if you have a slope m, then equation of line is gonna look like y minus y one on one side is equal to m multiplied by x minus x one. So this is our formula to use. Whenever you need to produce equation of line. So you could technically apply this formula as well, but you needed to write the coordinates of points and plug them in, and that would be the way to go. In fact, why don't I do this? Because I already have one point here, zero, zero, right? So I can redo 
the same exercise, but just utilizing the fact that point x1, y1 is a point with coordinates 0, 0. So let me do this by taking the uh, y1 and replacing it with a 0 in the equation above. Now they told, it, told us that slope was 2, right? And then x minus x1 and x1 is also 0. So using this other formula, look at what I get. 2 multiplied by x. And this is really the same exact equation that we just produced by using the other approach. So if you look at the uh, slope, so it's a rise, right? which is 1 divided by 2, which is, so rise is 1 and run is 2. I say, Alex, why did you divide 2 by 1, not 1 by 2? Oh, thank you for telling me that. See, I wasn't careful. I think I need to wake up because indeed the slope here is one half. Thank you for noticing. So I didn't do the right exercise. That's what you said. I had to put one half, right? So you had to fix it like that. Put one half. Thank you. Thank you. So I need to put one half, not two, because I was not careful dividing one by two. And I had to actually make sure that my rise was equal to one, right? And my run was equal to two. And somehow I mixed them up. So that's why I didn't do it correctly. But you did it, right? So you know it better than I. So if slope is one half, you just put one half. But I should be also careful. <clears throat> use the right result for the slope. So anyways, let me try the problem that actually expects to do the uh, finding of equation, like let's say exercise number 33, where they give you the slope m, which is negative 3 halves, right? And the point x1, y1 with coordinates positive 2 and negative 4. So now I'm going to be concentrated. I want to use correct numbers, not something else. Right? What we are given is a pair of numbers to plug into our equation. And those are negative 3 halves instead of slope. So let me put this negative three or two I put instead of slope. That's my first piece of information. And then I need to times this by, in the parentheses, x minus x1. So x1 is number positive two. And then from y, I must subtract y1, which is number negative four. So I want to make sure that everything is placed correctly into the formula. So then we can simplify and get the answer. So it looks like we have y plus 4 on the left side. And I'm also going to distribute these negative 3 over 2. So I multiply it by x. And then I also multiply negative 3 over 2 by positive number 2. So when I do this, the 2 will cancel, right? Because if I have 3 over 2 multiplied by plus 2, so the 2 and the 2 will go away. So I'll just have 3 left. And what will be my answer then? Well, I will bring the 4 over to the right side of my equation. I want to always isolate unknown y. So minus 3 halves multiplied by x. And then I have uh, 4 subtracted from 3. So this will be a negative 1. 
So I just produce the answer for equation that has the particular value for point and for the slope. And please notice that I wrote the answer again in the form with y on one side and the slope times x plus y-axis intercept on the other side. So that's a pretty standard process. And that's what we utilize quite often. So there is one more formula here that is designed for us to find that slope. It says y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. That's another formula that's actually last formula I want to consider today. So this happens when you're looking for the slope of line that goes through a pair of points. For example, in the problem number 15, when you're asked to find a slope, and if you have two points, two, three, the first one, and four, comma zero, the second point. So here's another formula that I will use, and it again designed to find slope m. Let me write it a little bit better so you can see m here. Right. So so-called slope formula. And the group of exercises here is asking us about using this slope formula. So I'm going to prepare my coordinates of those points, the first and the second point coordinates, so we can carefully replace them into this fraction above. So I'm going to be using a set of y2 number zero. So I just plug numbers way there instead of y1 number three. And then with x's in denominator, I have four minus two. And then I can simplify and get the slope. So it looks like here we divided negative three by two. And this is it. So the slope of that line will be negative which means that this is a fallen line. Let me, just for fun, plot these two points and see what is really going on. So first point is with coordinates two and three, so someplace up here, two, two three. And the second point will be on the x-axis, right? Because first coordinate of it is four, but second coordinate is zero. So point with coordinates four comma zero is a second point. So when I connect these two points, you can see that line kind of goes down. So Alex, why does it go down? Well, if you start on the left and keep going along the line, you will be going down. That's the idea. So you always see what happens when you are moving from left to right if you're actually moving up or down. So slope, I guess, is a key piece of information that one needs to know when deal with lines. And that's why I'd like to do another exercise here in finding slopes. And then I will ask you to do one as well. So let me try to do an exercise number 17, which is recommended. And then you can do 16 for the quiz. So let's just practice using the formula that we just saw here. So in exercise 17, where we have two points, minus two comma three is the first one, and uh, two comma one is the second one. So we're given two points. I will prepare them by marking First point, x1, y1. And also second point, x2 and y2. And then to get 
the slope, they want, we're going to use this formula that I just utilized on the right side. So to prepare to find slope, I'm going to have a fraction. And I make sure that I subtract things on the top and the bottom. So what do I subtract? Y coordinates are one and three, right? Y2 is one, Y1 is three. Okay, then X coordinates that I subtract are two and uh, negative two, right? Because X1 is negative. So I must make sure that I have this also subtracted, this negative two. That actually tells me that we add, right? That we add these numbers two and four will be on the bottom. Two and two is four. Well, on the top is negative two because I subtract one and three, it's a negative number two. Or slope is minus one half. And that's it. So they want a slope. You gave them slope, made them happy, and that's good enough. So here's the equation for you as promised for the quiz exercise number 16. Same thing I just did a couple of times. So please find a slope of the line here. Don't hurry, put this only in the chat to my name, right? And of course, don't graph the line. You cannot graph it even if you want here in the chat. So just give me the slope. Just tell me the answer. And that'd be all we need for today. So after you're done, you can leave and enjoy the day. And we'll continue on Friday. Make sure you don't forget to calculate the slope, please, before you leave.